know she's here to talk to us about pain, which many of us, of course, have a, an aversion to. So please welcome onto the stage, Anna, who's going to talk about no pain, no gain. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm going to start the afternoon with what we call attitude of gratitude. We've been going on the last two days now. Can you just give a pat on your neighbor and say thank you for being there? I did a big thank you for all of you because if you were not there, I can't be standing here and talking anything. So thank you so much for being there. I also need to send my gratitude to all my teachers who've taught me and made me wise enough that I can stand here and share something with you. Which includes all the master trainers and of course all of you. Like I said, if you hadn't touched my life, I can't touch yours. So thank you so much. Um, I hope I'm clear. You can hear me? Perfect. Very nice. We've all gone through lunch and why not just not study but do something differently? Why not just get up? from your chairs. Oh. Why not? <laughs> okay, you guys look nice. How about just holding your head like this? Imagine that all the worries, all the pain that you've been holding up here, because we've been talking about mind, brain, and everything, right? Just holding it, close your eyes. Imagine you're picking up, lifting all this weight off. Mm. Lifting all this weight off, don't put it on your neighbor, put it on one side. Slowly moving it, then put it on one side. That's it. Very nice. How does that feel? Once more. Just hold all the worries, all the pain, all the anxiety that you've been feeling in your head, in your mind. Holding it right up, slowly, 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 tearing it up, moving it on one side. And just say the next little while I'm going to be without pain. How does that feel? I want you to walk slowly in the room. Don't look at anyone. Just looking down, look at your feet and just connect with yourself. Connect with the earth, connect with yourself. Just walk. Just walk slowly. Just walk. Very slow. Take a small stroll around. Connecting with yourself. Connecting with everything that you've been through. Everything that's brought you into this room. Everybody that's touched your life. Just connecting. Just connecting with yourself. Just connecting maybe with from wherever you're coming. Your people, your loved ones. Just connecting. And slowly slipping back into your chest, doing very well. Walking back. And as you walk back into your chest, tell yourself today, just for the next 45 minutes, maybe I can think about being without pain. How does that sound? So when I was looking through the dictionary meaning of no pain, no gain, it really baffled me because it said if you want to improve, then you must work hard. And if you work hard, that's going to hurt. Can you imagine? I can only be a star if I worked hard and I got pain. Which means, if I didn't have pain, then I hadn't worked hard enough. And so I couldn't be a star, really. Is this like a walked up understanding which is coming from generations? Well, the dictionary meaning also said it's physical pain, discomfort caused by illness and injury. Or it can be a pain of losing someone. If you're very dear to someone or someone is very dear to you, that person is just gone away from your life. How does that feel? Sad, right? You can feel that pain right in your heart and maybe everywhere in your body. But when I look at it, so let me tell you, every presentation that I made in my college, 
I used to be teaching textile chemistry at one point, and I used to be teaching the senior most classes textile chemistry. And it was easy for me to write chemistry because it didn't have spelling. Because if I had to write spelling, I always made a mistake. But later in the day, I realized that the words actually jumped for me, and which we call today learning disability. Well, it became an ability for me. So when I look at words, I'm going to give you how I look at the words. You can take it or leave it. That's my opinion. Okay? So you don't have to hold it and say, hey, that's not how it is. Just be out of the box like Dr. Crazy said. Be out of the box, be open to it. So pain for me, P stood for passive, A stood for aggressive, and it was all inside my work. Nothing was happening outside. Absolutely nothing was happening outside. And if I looked at the word PA, that's PA, that obviously meant my father and my generations. Can you imagine, because I'm from India, and if we go back to many, many years, and I'm going to say a few things that maybe you won't like, and a few things that are horrifying, and a few things that are nice. We all have that in our cultures, don't we? Well, widows at that point were not existing because every time the man died, she had to sit on the burning pyre and kill herself. That was a part, it was called sati, of course it's banned today. And if she did survive later in the day, she was then, her hair was chopped off. She was made to sit in one small corner, wear a white sari. And a lot of movies are made, Bollywood movies are made on this. It's all about the change that women went through that suppression. I'm talking about generations. Could it be difficult for a person coming from that kind of a background, standing on the stage and saying, I'm good enough? I bet it is very, very tough. But if I can do it, I vouch for it. Each one of you sitting down there have something in your culture that did not let you go ahead, give you that pain. How about just moving ahead of that pain and trying to today, just trying, yeah? I don't believe in trying, but how about just trying today to move ahead of your generations? Passive also in Latin language meant suffering. Can you imagine? Pass meant I was going to fail or pass, and pass also meant suffering. I'm going to live my life suffering. Again, going back to the first one, if I was suffering, that means I was working hard and then I can be a star. Can you imagine to become a star? I needed to first hurt and work hard. Aggressive behavior, of course, is all about fighting with someone. You could be silent and yet be aggressive. People often mistake this and think, you know, you have to fight with someone, like fist fighting. Most of the women, when they're very angry, they cry. That's aggressive. That's not depressive, okay? So I've seen myself doing that at times when I'm very angry and I can't express myself, I probably will sit down and let the tears flow. Have you experienced that? That's an aggressive form, it's not a passive form, okay? We all conditioned like the little dog here. When the whistle rings, the mouth waters and the food is dead. All of our responses are really not reflex responses. What is a reflex response? It happens and you do it. You react to it like this. You don't bring your head in between. You don't bring your mind in between. You know what to do. How many of us are constantly in the story of thinking? So most of our responses are cultured, conditioned cultured responses. Depending from wherever you came, you are in that little cage. Your responses are all caged. And some of us like to look out of the box and think differently. You're called a rebel. Everybody likes a rebel, but not the one who's in your house. <laughs> Animals don't get married. That's a cultural story. Have you ever heard <laughs> animals get married? They don't think about the caste, the culture, the religion, from which community you came, and so I will get married to you, I will fall in love with you because you are that color. It doesn't happen, does it? We human beings are so conditioned that even when we fall in love, 
we are always talking about our way. So I feel you're all living in a little cage. Can you imagine a cage above you right now? Cage of culture, religion, beliefs, languages, self-images, conditioned images, nationality, name. Of course, your name tells it all. From where are you? What kind? How do you speak? Heritage and love, of course. We do things in the name of love. Stop doing it. In Hindi we say ehsan karna, kisi pe koi ehsan mat karna. Which means do me a favor, don't do any favor on me. <laughs> so when yesterday Dr. Kwesi was speaking about self-image, this is what came to me. Image actually means I am a certain age and I behave that. And that's how you're looking at yourself. Somebody told you you look pretty, so you behave that. Somebody said, hey, you look like the sister of your daughter. <gasps> Lovely. Somebody said, do you look like an 80 year old? And we behave like that. Can we imagine? Our self-image is a reflection of what others tell us. So each one of you is a walking around mirror for another person. Who must tell you about this? You have heard of Rob Bobo Van Rudin? He's not here. He's one of my teachers and he's a beautiful person. He came down to India and he did something really funny. Do you have a book? Can I borrow some of his book, please? Thank you so much. Well, he took a book like this. He threw it on the ground and he almost stepped on it in India. And everybody in the audience went, oh, oh. He didn't know what happened. He took the book again. He thought he was doing something funny. Again threw it down and went back again. And everybody looked at him and said, stop! <laughs> and he just stopped there. And he asked everybody, what did I do wrong? So that's my ball down there. You can't do that. So we call, in India, books, especially the ones that you study from, are considered Goddess Saraswati. We pray to our books. We don't step on our books. That's again culture. But they explain to him that you can stand on the newspaper. I don't know what logic that was. <laughs> they kept telling him, you Rob can stand on the newspaper. Are we doing something that we are not even realizing? Are we reacting to people in the same way? Are we laughing at because they are different? Do we not accept the difference? Do we want everybody to be a square, a circle, a triangle? Well, it's so much spoken about the union. What you just saw was a union <laughs> for the whole Indian culture. My God, how can he stand on the book? God forbid, if he had stood on that book, I would have had to put him into the next plane and say, please, Rob, never come back again. You robbed me of my nationality and culture. <laughs> So unit is nothing but unexpected, dramatic, isolating, no strategy. I explain it something like an earthquake in your life. Something, you were just calmly sitting and can you imagine, suddenly everything was shaking, like an earthquake in your life. And you just didn't know what to do. My grandfather told me when I was very little, when there's an earthquake, don't stand inside the structure. Get out, walk on a bed, Go on the ground where nothing exists. We don't do that, so we die. We learn for one to find strategies. Go on a big ground where there's no building, there's nothing that's going to fall on you. So in meta language, we say when the unit happens, that is something like an earthquake happens in your life, you will either freeze, fight, or flight. Like this, you will freeze. You play dead. You will fight or you will fight. That's a human reaction. You're supposed to do this. Animals do this. There's nothing in the not rocket science over here. Yet, all these reactions are supposed to happen outside the body. Are we waiting for someone to take action outside the body? Please remember this. Really, the actions are happening inside the body already, whether you like it or you don't like it. There's a reflex action happening, and the fight, flight, and the freeze has already happened inside.